ChatGPT just got several new updates that make it 100 times more powerful because they just released three brand new models that completely changed how ChatGPT responds and interacts, and they made it way better at following directions. On top of that, you can now connect ChatGPT to thousands of different apps, and by the end of this video, you're going to know how to do all these things and different use cases that they unlock. Change number one is that ChatGPT is beginning to roll out their group chat feature. If you don't have this yet, don't panic. You'll probably get it over the next few days or at least the next few weeks. So now you're going to see in the top right hand corner that you can start a group chat right here. In addition to that, this is what it's going to look like. We click on start group chat and you'll be able to add people to your chats to plan, to share ideas, to get creative. Now, if we come over here, you are going to see that you also get two things in here. One, you could determine whether or not ChatGPT will only respond when you or someone else mentions it or if it will respond automatically. I would strongly suggest that you have it only respond when you mention it. So multiple people can give multiple inputs and then all that gets passed to ChatGPT. So you kind of have a group chat with ChatGPT in it. In addition to that, you're going to see custom instructions right here. These custom instructions are going to be separate than your custom instructions for your personalized ChatGPT. These are going to be specific to the group chat. In addition to that, you can see that from here, you'll be able to manage who is in the group chat. You'll be able to manage your group chat link and you'll be able to rename the group if you wanted to. And then this is just another screenshot of what this actually looks like in the UI on a mobile device. The first four that I showed you were going to be from a computer, but this is what it actually looks like. You can see that you could tag people in a new or existing chat. You can invite people right here. You can then find group chats in the sidebar and you can actually begin your group chat. And we can see multiple people can actually post. This this one right here is showing it to you with ChatGPT off. So ChatGPT then only responds if you tag it and it will take into consideration all of this context. Change number two is that ChatGPT finally rolled out ChatGPT 5.1 and you can see that there are several different models here. In fact, there are three. They have auto right here, which decides how long to think for. They have instant, which is going to answer you right away. And then they have thinking. And we could go through each of these and we could see that 5.1 is applied each time. Now, I would strongly suggest that as your daily driver, you're using ChatGPT 5.1 instant. If you want to do something that requires more thought or that is a bit harder, I would turn on thinking. I would avoid Avoid using auto because personally I just don't find that it's that good and it doesn't actually give you any benefit. I would just go instant when you're just asking ChatGPT questions and if you're doing something a lot more powerful, I would go with their thinking model. Now, this unlocks a ton of different changes and I want to walk you through each of these because these are really powerful. So first and foremost, you're going to notice that ChatGPT is now warmer by default and it's way more conversational. Basically, ChatGPT took the personality from ChatGPT 4.0 that everybody loved and they put it in GPT 5.1. And I think that they nailed it this time because I haven't seen people freaking out over X or over Reddit or over social media about how they ruined ChatGPT. In fact, I think people are just getting better responses from ChatGPT now. And we could see right here what these differences actually look like. So in the past, it was say something like here are a few simple effective ways to help ease stress but this time it actually relates to you i've got you wrong that's a totally normal especially with everything you've got going on lately so it's way more personal it's way more warm in addition to that they've also improved how it actually follows instructions so models are now more reliable and answer the questions that you actually asked now we could come over here and we could see how this actually goes through and makes a big difference but there are three places that this really changes things that i wanted to make sure that you're aware of first and foremost if you're coming over to ChatGPT and you are using agent mode this makes agent mode way better because it ChatGPT 5.1 is just way more agentic. It thinks through things, it walks through things, it talks through things way better and follows your instructions way better. In addition to that, if you come over here and you use something like ChatGPT Atlas, you're going to notice that it also has an agent mode in here. And again, this also got a huge upgrade. So if you're trying to automate something inside of ChatGPT Atlas or just an agent mode on ChatGPT, that got way better. But the the other thing that got a massive upgrade is when you add in sources or you add in other tools. So if we come over to the bottom left hand corner over here, turn on settings right here, apps and connectors, you're going to see that we could set up a bunch of different apps and connectors right here. The capabilities with this just got way better. Now, the connector set that is actually incredibly powerful is going to be Zapier right here because this is going to allow you to connect your ChatGPT to more than 8,000 different apps and this is incredibly easy to get set up. In fact, if you go to the pinned comment below, it shows you for free exactly how to set this up. And you see, you just come over here and you connect this right here. You then come back over into ChatGPT. You need to 
come into apps and connectors down here, you need to scroll down, come to advanced settings, make sure that developer mode is then turned on. And then from here, you can actually come through here and connect all of your different apps. For example, I have YouTube connected, I have Google Ads connected, I have Kit connected, I have Zoom connected, I have Appify connected, because these are all tools that I use throughout my daily life. And then if we actually come over here into apps and connectors and come under Zapier, we can see all of the different things that this can actually go through and do. So I can have this actually take action on my behalf. For example, like coming over here and asking this and saying, using the YouTube tool, please find me videos trending for ChatGPT 5.1. And then this literally went through and found me all of the videos that have been posted recently that are trending for ChatGPT 5.1 so that I would actually be able to make content based off of this. And this use Zapier again, combined with YouTube in order to actually pull this. And we can see that if we actually come over here, we could add videos to playlists with this. We could upload videos directly from ChatGPT. We could update video thumbnails, you could do an API request, you could get a report, or you could find specific videos. Or what I could do is come over here, click on plus, come over to more, click on Zapier, and I could say, using Zoom, please create a meeting for November 19th at 3 p.m. Eastern, and then please give me the meeting details so that I can send it to all the different participants. And then what this is going to go through is actually do this for me again, because this has access to my Zoom, and we could see that this can create meetings, it could get summaries, it could find recordings and download it. There are so many different things that you could actually do with this. So now instead of you having to have multiple tabs open, you could literally just come into ChatGPT and be able to control thousands of different apps all from inside of here. I mean, you just type in the app that you're thinking of that you want to use, and I bet that Zapier connects to it. Now we can see right here that this went through and this successfully created this. So we could see that we have this meeting now, we could see the topic. It says that a join link was not returned by Zoom in the response but it says that we could fetch it if we wanted to, so I asked it to please fetch it. And now this went through and this actually pulled this. So now I have this all right here and guess what? I can now connect this to my Gmail if I wanted to by coming over here, typing in Gmail, and we will be able to see all of the different things that we would be able to do under here. For example, create a draft or send an email. So guess what I could do? I can now email this out to all these different registrants directly from here without ever having to leave ChatGPT because now you can control thousands of apps directly from inside of it. And my favorite part about Zapier and using it to connect ChatGPT to more than 8,000 different apps is you could get started with it today for free if you go to the pinned comment below. I would strongly suggest that you do this because if you don't have ChatGPT connected to thousands of other different apps, you're not using ChatGPT up to its full capabilities like you should be, and Zapier makes that incredibly easy to do. So go to the pinned comment below and get that set up right now. Now the next change I wanted to highlight is we could see the ChatGPT5 thinking was also upgraded here. So this should actually say GPT-5.1 thinking, but it's more efficient and it's easier to understand in everyday use. So it now adapts its thinking time more precisely to the question, spending more time on complex problems. And we could see GPT-5.1 spends less time on easy tasks and more time on hard tasks. And we could see how this actually breaks down in the number of tokens that are accurately generated per response. Now, in addition to that, we can see right here that GPT 5.1's thinking responses are more clear with less jargon and have fewer undefined terms. So basically what this is doing is this is calling on this thinking model, which is essentially is a PhD genius, and it is breaking down everything that it says into more approachable and more understandable things. And we can see right here that it's taking complex tasks at work and explaining technical concepts in a more easy to understand way. And we could actually see how big of a difference these two responses are right here. We could see that this is the no nonsense explanator that you want. This is incredibly technical over here. And we could see over here that this is just a lot easier to actually understand because it turns it into a metaphor, which is pretty cool. In addition to that, its tone is warmer, more empathetic. Again, you could kind of see this in the response right here. And then if we scroll down, you could see that you can actually make ChatGPT uniquely yours way more with this new model. So here's how you do it. You're going to be able to come over here and click on your settings right here, click on personalization, and you could see that from here, if we click on default, they have way more different tones here. For example, they have professional, they have friendly, they have candid, they have quirky, they have efficient, they have nerdy, and they have cynical. Now, what I would do is I would actually go through and I would change this depending on what you're actually doing inside of ChatGPT. Because let's say that you are looking at an article 
and you want to be able to know whether or not this article is actually true, you might want to take a cynical response here. Or maybe you were asking this for feedback on how you could improve your resume. You might want to go with candid right here. Or maybe you're dealing with something in your personal life and you're talking to ChatGPT about that. You're going to want this to be more friendly. Or if you're having this write an email inside of Zapier and you're going to send that email out, you might want this to be more professional. Or if you're writing, you might want it to be more quirky, which is going to be playful and imaginative. Or if you have it doing some math problem, you might want it to be efficient, which is going to allow it to be concise and plain. Basically, you have way more different options when it comes to choosing what your personality is going to be on ChatGPT here, and this really does make a massive difference. In addition to that, there is another new setting that I would strongly, strongly suggest that you have turned on. If we come over here into personalization, we scroll all the way down, you're going to see advanced right here. Now this new setting is inside of here, but before we get to that, I wanted to make sure that you have reference save memories turned on, you have reference chat history turned on, you have pulse reference memory turned on, you have pulse in new chats turned on, and that you also have record mode turned on. Now, in addition to that, under advanced, you need to make sure that connector search is going to be turned on. This is going to let ChatGPT automatically search your connected sources for answers. Now, I want you to think about this again. If we come over here and we click on this and we click on all the different sources that are here, we could see that this is connected to booking.com to Expedia, to Slack. If we come under more sources, we could see all the other things that this is connected to. Now, if we come under more here, we're going to see even more things. Now, guess what this does? This allows ChatGPT to go through and access all those different connectors and all those different apps and Zapier, if you have that approved on here, and all of the different tools that that is going to be connected to every time that it goes to reply to you. And what that ends up doing is giving you a way better response because it's not just going based off of the things that you've told ChatGPT, but it's also going off of the things that are on your other apps that ChatGPT is now connected to. And I can't emphasize enough how much of a difference this makes in the quality of responses that you get. Because if you want ChatGPT to give you good responses, ChatGPT needs access to everything that you're doing. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I'd strongly suggest you check out this video right here that walks you through several different changes that Notebook LM just got. Because if you're not using this tool, you're missing out. I'll see you over there.